I bought myself an Oculus Quest 2, and it's pretty cool. Uh, this will be my review of the device. Playing behind me is some of the footage I captured playing Half-Life Alex. Now you'll notice that Half-Life Alex is not an Oculus Quest game, so the, uh, you might expect, and that is the truth, that this review is gonna focus on using the Oculus Quest 2 as a wireless headset for PC VR, although I will touch on some of the things um, you could expect using it as a standalone device. That wasn't my primary use case, so I'm gonna focus in on what I was interested in. All right, so what's going on with this thing? I bet my hair is lovely right now. Oh, yeah. Anyway, okay, so these come in at $299, or the version I got was uh, $399 for the 256 gigabytes of internal memory, whereas you get 64 gigabytes on the $299 version. As far as what comes with it, it's the headset, it comes with a glasses spacer, which is included right here, and at least with my glasses, which are not particularly large, it works just fine with my glasses. Um, also comes with both the controllers and a charging cable. That's about it, but that's really all you need. One of the coolest things about the Oculus Quest 2 is that it's a completely standalone device, meaning it has inside-out tracking. You will see that there are these four cameras right here, and they are watching the controllers, which emit a, a sensor that this can track, so you don't need those little boxes and cameras around the room that many other VR devices require. Also, one of the main selling points and the main reason that I got this as a PC VR headset is that it can now link wirelessly to your PC through your Wi-Fi router, you don't need to plug in any cables, and it is a completely standalone wireless experience, as you can see, I guess it's over there, uh, as me using this and playing Half-Life Alex in the background. This was one of my first, um, uh, like, couple of hours into the VR experience, so it's not exactly a first impression that you're seeing there, but um, I was still pretty new to the experience. Okay, so um, that's, what, what it comes with. Now, how does it do? Well, one thing I'll talk about quickly is the specifications. So it ha one of the downsides to this is that it has a 100 degree field of view. This is basically, you're looking at the world in VR through binoculars. This has one of these smaller fields of view, so I'm looking through smaller binoculars compared to if I bought like a Valve Index, which has like a 130 degree field of view. So you just feel a little bit more closed in in the environment. That being said, it didn't bother me at all. But if you're considering switching from a VR headset if you already own one that has a higher degree field of view, because I have talked to a friend of mine has a Valve Index and was like, I saw you got a Quest 2, should I switch to that? Which might be a weird decision because the Valve Index is $1,000 and you can get this for $299. Why would somebody want to switch? Well, the main appeal here is the wireless ability. The big downside though, again, one of them is the field of view compared to some other headsets. Let's talk about the wireless function as well. So I don't think it's captured in the video that's playing behind me here, but occasionally, especially when somebody else is using my Wi-Fi network, like my wife might be streaming some Netflix in another room, you will occasionally get some stutters, but this is gonna be completely different based on everybody's wireless network situation. And if you're the only person using yours at that time, it would probably be a lot more stable. They recommend that you have a uh, newer Wi-Fi router with, at least, with a five gigahertz connection. Now, I'm actually using Google's um, home Wi-Fi kit that came out uh, two years ago, something like that, I don't remember the exact date. And it's actually a wireless mesh system, which according to the uh, Oculus website, was not recommended right now for the AirLink, which is still, well, that's the name of the wireless feature, and was still experimental. But if you're curious, it worked fabulously. Um, now I was on the uh, connected to the main wireless mesh device. I haven't tried it in another room of the house where I would be probably passing through the mesh network. I'm not sure if that would make a difference, but something to keep in mind. Anyway, but on my Google Wi-Fi, I can say of the like six or seven evenings I've spent playing this, in two of those evenings, did I notice any network hiccups? And it was only for about 10 or 15 seconds at a time where basically the screen would freeze. I could move my head, but the trick picture wasn't tracking with it. And basically what I did is I just paused the game, 
waited a few seconds, kept moving my head around, eventually things started following me with it, and then I was good to go again. Um, for me, to not be tethered in, it's worth it. My previous experience with a VR headset is a PlayStation VR, and this uh, and that is wired in. So I do have experience using VR with a wire, and being untethered and completely wireless was the main reason I grabbed this thing, and it's doing it great. You can also try out, though I haven't yet, Virtual Desktop, which is a paid-for app that also allows you to do a wireless link to your uh, PC. Um, but the Air Link is free, although it's currently still in a beta mode as of the time of me filming here. It's fairly easy to turn on. You just need to install the Oculus app on your computer, go into the, the beta settings, and you can just turn on Oculus Link. And then um, in the uh, Oculus device itself, you go to the experimental features and you're able to turn on the Oculus Link. Once you've done it once, it kind of remembers it and it's like one or two clicks of a button and you're good to go. From there, to get into Steam VR, all you need to do is put a desktop shortcut to Steam VR, and then open up the uh, desktop viewer inside of the uh, AirLink screen. And once you're in the desktop viewer, you can select that desktop shortcut to Steam VR, and away you go. It's really that easy. Once you've done it once, by the way, there'll be a shortcut right to it since it's one of your frequently used apps. So you open up your AirLink, Steam VR will be right there. Works flawlessly. I've had a great experience with it. Um, and um, overall, I'm very, very happy with this device. Let's go into a few other technical specs you should know about. It has one of the higher resolution screens. Uh, uh, like it's a little bit higher resolution than the Valve Index, not by a lot. There are devices out there with like 8K displays, but they're very expensive. And one thing you should think of is the higher resolution you're trying to run from a PC means the more graphic card horsepower you're gonna need to run it. Um, I'm running this on an RTX 2070, and Half-Life Alex de uh, defaulted just running at some pretty high settings, and uh, I just left it at those, and it's been completely smooth, the game looks beautiful, and it's been a very fun experience. So, high resolution screen, not the highest I've ever seen. Here's my negative about the screen. The black levels are not great. So in these darker scenes that I was playing here, in the headset itself, when the screen's black, now in a bright scene, the blacks look okay. But if you're in a very, very dark scene, you can tell that the blacks are gray, not black. And that's because of the um, screen that they chose to go with here. It's both the cost thing, but also while well, the previous quest, to my knowledge, had an OLED screen, which had much better black levels, uh, the advantage of this screen is I believe it allows them to do a better sub-pixel rendering, which reduces the screen door effect. So it has a nice resolution, and along with the, the um, sub-pixel technology that, I'll be honest, is a little over my head to understand exactly how it works, I can tell you that there's not a, not a real bad screen door effect. Like I said, I've used like the PlayStation VR, and everything was a lot more pixelated and much more clearly through a screen door of pixels than this thing is. I'm not saying I can't find a pixel if I stare at it, but um, it, it looks pretty good. You get a very convincing experience, especially the wireless ability helps you remember that, well, it helps you forget that you're plugged into a PC uh, while you're playing. Very much enjoying that. Um, as uh, In terms of the controllers themselves, I have no issues with them compared to something like the Valve Index, which tracks your hand movements a little bit better. This one can still good, do a good job. It can tell if you're pushing a button with your thumb or if you've raised your thumb up so you can give like a thumbs up. Um, it can tell how, how much you're pressing down this interior button uh, with your middle finger. And so it kind of links your, your, your finger movements together with these three fingers controlled by that button. But it can tell to what degree you're, you're sensing them. And I have absolutely zero issues so far with it tracking my hand movements. I've had absolutely no issues whatsoever. These controllers have been solid. I have had no problems whatsoever with them. No complaints. Okay, getting back to the headset itself and its overall design, the main complaint I have is the head strap. If I end up using this a lot, I'm gonna look for an aftermarket head strap upgrade. When I wear this for the first half hour, it's pretty dang comfortable, doesn't bother me at all. As soon as I start approaching the 45 minutes to one hour mark, I start to feel the pressure on my face 
it's uh, it's not like the PlayStation VR again. The one that I have more personal experience with to compare it with was much more comfortable. It was also a much larger headset and was a very different strap design, but it was more comfortable. I felt like it more evenly distributed the weight around my face, whereas this one was pushing a lot of weight up against my eyes themselves. I was eventually able to play around with the top strap. This is Velcro here. It actually took me a day before I realized I could adjust the top strap. It was much more comfortable after doing some adjustments there, but it's still again after the first hour or so, I generally take it off and take a break. Now for me, that's not a big deal because I game in the evenings when my kids are asleep and I usually only have about an hour, maybe an hour and a half of gaming time in the evenings anyway. But for some of you who are looking for more of a marathon experience, uh, I'd have question marks about that. Also, if you're worried about interpupillary distance adjustments, it does have them. I'm currently on the medium setting of two. I doubt you can see that, um, but it has, uh, locked in settings, so it's not a slider with infinite, you know, degrees of adjustability. You just like pull on these and they snap into position. You can probably hear that snapping, right? So they snap into a few presets. You've got one, two, and three. There are exactly three. So it's got, uh, <laughs> you got close together eyes, medium eyes, and wide eyes. Mine happen to be medium. I guess I'm just an average sort of guy. All right. Um, so that's pretty much uh, the uh, main con there is the head strap on the actual design itself. I have no issues with the adjustability there on the uh, interpupillary distance, but just letting you know, it's only three settings. Hopefully they work for you. It was fine for me on the medium setting. Now, one thing that actually surprised me was the um, how good the audio felt for not plugging in headphones. Um, so I assumed that the built-in audio would be completely junk and that I would probably either use earbuds for lightweight or actually I have these nice like AKG K702 studio reference headphones from back when I used to learn a little like home recording studio. And these are actually fairly light and they're open. So you do have that open feeling. They're not closed back. And I tried using these on here. And I've got to say, these, these did sound noticeably better than the completely just built in audio on here. But after trying it back to back play sessions, and I've also tried earbuds as well, um, just not having anything on my ears and having it feel like it's just coming from around me, um, I prefer just using it completely headphone free. That was my preference. Um, again, I'm actually pretty picky. I wouldn't say I'm an audiophile, but I don't cheap out on my audio gear. Um, I, I, I really was actually pleasantly surprised by the positional audio on this thing. Um, it's very convincing as far as where it's coming from. I was very impressed. Overall, I am very, very happy with this device um, as a PC wireless headset. Um, again, my budget was up to $1,000 when I was considering these things. By the way, I made a video talking through how I decided what the best wireless head, uh, best PC VR headset was. I can probably link a card up here. If also, if you're interested in the unboxing experience, um, I'll link that up here after I link the, uh, uh, <laughs> the uh, deciding which one I, I was gonna buy here. Anyway, um, so, uh, yeah, I've been I've been very happy with this. My budget was up to $1,000. I considered getting the Valve Index, but right at least right now, as of the time of recording this, at the very end of May, almost June of uh, 2021, the more expensive headsets don't have some of the important features I wanted, which was inside out tracking. That's where I don't need to have a bunch of cords and boxes around my living room. It's just this itself and it does everything and they didn't have the wireless connection to the PC built in out of the box. And the fact that I could get those features, which were big selling points for me, and also not have to pay very much money, it's one of the cheapest headsets out there, um, is frankly mind blowing to me. Except if you just can't stand the fact that there's a Facebook log on here. And you guys, if you research these at all, I'm sure you're expecting this discussion. You absolutely just cannot use this device, to my knowledge, without logging in via your Facebook account. Um, to me, I've just accepted the fact that Facebook, Amazon, and Google already know absolutely everything about me. And I've just given up on privacy because we live in a horrible dystopian world where the giant corporations own us.
So, hey, wiretap, uh, you know, tell me about the Oculus Quest. You know, people literally like used to be worried about having a wiretap in their house. Now they pay to have one in their house and they ask it to like, you know, give them cooking direct cooking instructions. Anyway, <laughs> um, that's a whole other side note. You ha but you do have to be logged into a Facebook account to use this thing. Although it did seem like you're at least able to turn off it publicly sharing what you're doing to Facebook. Um, so that's at least controllable, although, you know, Facebook is still going to be gathering your data. You are the product, you know, but that might factor into why it's able to sell this so cheap. Also, the fact that you can buy things from the Oculus Store. Now, that's another uh, nice thing here is that it does integrate with the uh, Oculus Store. So you're able to buy things from there rather than having to use various workarounds to get Oculus content working on non-Oculus uh, non devices. There are some exclusive games for Oculus. Okay, like I said, I was going to mainly focus this as a PC VR experience uh, review. And I think I'm pretty much done. Overall, I am massively po uh, positive on this. I do not regret this being the one I went through, even though I could have uh, afforded to go with a more expensive headset. The wireless and the inside out tracking being the biggest selling points for me here. Now, um, as a standalone device, I haven't purchased a lot of these standalone games on here, although I might in the future. I've got to say, though, that in the, just the built-in little demos and things and using it from the home screen, uh, it looked much better than I expected, and it ran much better than I expected. For being so cheap, I wasn't sure what kind of visual quality you'd get out of it, and no, it's not Half-Life Alex levels of visual quality. But it was better than I expected. Now, if I'm going to play a game like Beat Saber, I'm probably going to do it on the built-in version on the standalone device to avoid latency. I'm not sure I brought this up earlier when I talked about your wireless connection and even the wired co connection, but there is a little bit of latency added, which I'm going to be honest, when playing Half-Life Alex, I can't even tell it's there. I cannot tell there's any latency at all unless I'm having one of those network, uh, network hiccups like I mentioned earlier. However, if I was going to play a game like Beat Saber, where it's a rhythm action game and every millisecond counts, I'd probably rather play it on the standalone device to avoid the latency issues transferring over the wireless connection. But in a game like Half-Life Alex, I've had zero issues whatsoever. Um, the other thing I'll mention again is video compression. You get some video compression on the wireless link, and you will also get video compression on the wired link. That's one of the main uh, downsides to the visual quality here compared to other PC headsets. Other PC headsets that you plug in are going to be plugging in uh, via a cable that does not compress the image, whereas this goes through a, a data connection, and it's actually like encoding the video and slightly compressing it as it sends it to you, even if you're plugged in, also if you're wireless. So there is some compression. It's not very noticeable. In a few dark scenes, I felt like I could tell a little bit of artifact, compression artifacts, but oh man, it was very hard to notice. I, I don't think the compression's that big of a deal. Uh, so I wouldn't let that be a, a, a reason not to grab this thing. I think being able to play wirelessly more than makes up uh, for uh, dealing with any sort of uh, issues. Okay, I don't want to ramble on forever. Overall, I highly recommend this device as long as the Facebook thing doesn't completely turn you off. My Half-Life Alex footage seems to be maybe running out here, so we might as well end here. I read every comment on my channel and I reply to as many as I can. So if you have questions, let me know in the comment section and I or somebody else can probably answer those for you. And I hope that you guys have an excellent day.